my name is Luke and welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I'd show you how to create a surrealistic environment. I had to create an environment for clients um, to advertise a TV and so I thought I would do something a little bit more fun and surreal. So let me show you how I did that. So I already have some assets over here that I download that I've got. So some flowers over here and some rocks. Uh, these are downloaded off of Bridge. Uh, if you don't use Bridge, you should use Bridge. It's great. So you can search uh, rocks and I got these two assets. I only really needed two and I'll change the shape of them and move them around. And then for the flowers over here, I used a plugin called Forrester and then just used this multi-floor and just chose some that I liked. If you don't have um, Forrester, you can just use Bridge again. It has a whole bunch of free assets. So if you go over here and say, plants then you can get like a whole bunch of 3d assets of plants and the same uh, technique should apply so for the materials all I've done for the rocks I think I did a basic color grade to both of them and just uh, seems like I didn't seems like I left them exactly the same Although with the sand, I did change it. Uh, I had two variations of the sand, just change, adding a color correction node over here, and then just changing the, the nodes to have one a little bit more lighter and one a little bit more darker, depending on the scenes. And then for the flowers, the textures are pretty simple. It's literally just a gradient that's uh, piped in. You don't have to worry about this. And yeah, so all of these are just a great different gradients over here. Very simple, and the gradients put into the transmission and the diffuse layer. So yeah, very simple. So yeah, let's jump into this. Let's start off by taking a plane. Let's make this around 2000 with about 500 segments in the width and height. We're then gonna add a displacer over here. Make that a child of that, and then go over here to noise and let's make the noise pretty big so 10,000 should be good let's just raise the low clip a bit and the high clip just a tad like that that should be good and then we're going to go back into the displacer into the shading and we're going to add a layer over here so that means we can layer multiple shaders on top of each other and that's how we're going to get the formation of the ground let's add another shader over here another noise and this time we're going to use a wavy turbulence Let's again put it to 10,000 and let's just bring down the high clip a bit. So you can't really see too much, but that's okay. It is still working. We just need to change the height over here. So let's maybe make it like 90. Yeah, that looks good. So this is a really good way of making procedural landscapes because just by adding two noises or multiple noises on top of each other, you can get some really cool results. And the cool thing about the layering is that now we can use different blending modes to mix between the two layers and we can kind of choose how much we want it to affect it. So let me just change this. Yeah, I like this one. That's uh, nice and this angle can even work, I guess. So yeah, that looks like that's fine. Let's now take this plane, duplicate it, and then clear this and add another noise over here. We're then gonna go to the object mode and change the height to about 0.2, uh, maybe 0.5. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding water now. So let's add noise. And I think we can keep everything the same. The only thing I would change is changing the animation speed to about 0.5. That means if you do a video as it goes, the water will move a little bit. And that just adds some nice little realism towards it. So I think that looks good. I just want to make this 0.2. Yeah, so it's a little bit more subtle. Cool. That looks quite nice. Let's just maybe bring this up a bit. So we're doing this so that we can just get some reflections because, you know, reflections always look great. Cool. Let's add a landscape now. Let's move this over here. Make it decently sized and then raise it up and let's just choose something that looks nice that looks quite nice but that's a little bit too detailed so over here with this rough and fine furrows if you change them to about 30 we can get rid of some of the details so the reason I don't really want too many details is because it's just gonna be in the background so it's really not that important 
Let's take another one. Clone it. Let's see. That looks quite nice. And let's move that a little bit further back. Like that. That seems quite nice. That's a pretty decent composition over here. Uh, let's go into view settings and then just change this up a bit just so we can see what we're working with. Cool, let's get Octane running. Let's change it to path tracing mode and let's add a Octane Daylight. For the sky color, we're going to change it to white. And then for the sun color, I think I used this gradient over here. So let's grab this gradient. Let's just take this color. that in here yeah cool let's go over here add let's just rotate the Sun a bit just so we can see what we're working with and then let's rotate it to a point that looks nice something like that looks quite nice I, I dig that uh, I see over here on this landscape these weird like bumps over there I think if we, if we change the phone Angle. Could we get rid of that? No, we cannot. Let's just add some more segments, maybe make that 200, and then that cleans that off. That is quite nice. Cool. For the water, you can use a you know specular material if you want that. I just wanted it to be perfectly reflective, so I just used a metallic layer just because that's perfectly reflective, and I thought that looked quite nice. Let's just add a camera over here just so that we can have that framing up. Cool. Let's now go over here into objects, octane scatter, and let's take one of our flowers. Let's start with this grass patch. Set the surface, distribution to surface, and then set our original plane to that surface. Cool. Let's add a lot more of these. Maybe like, like that looks good. Let's go into here and then just change the size a bit, just make it a little bit smaller. Cool, let's just make that a little bit smaller. And then now in the Octane Scatter, we're going to go down to Scale and we're going to add a Noise. So, make this a little bit bigger, maybe for like 500. And... Let's just see which noise looks good. That looks quite nice. Cool. Let's duplicate this again. Take another flower and put it in there. Let's go back into the noise. Oh, we're using a soul noise. Interesting. I'm surprised it gave us a cool result. And let's. Hmm. Why is it not? Something like that works. Let's just change the seed around a bit. See if we can get something we like. That's actually quite nice with the difference in tones. Let's add a little bit more of these. Like that. And then maybe a little more of these. Cool. And then let's add another. And let's add this grass patch to it. And then with this one, let's find a different noise, maybe like fire. Let's just solo it so that we can see what we're working with. Does that look nice with this? That's quite nice with the mix of them. I think I just want them to be a little bit more prominent like that. That looks very nice. Cool. Let's do another one because uh, I want to add one in the foreground over here. And let's change the seed again. Maybe like that. What does that look like? That looks quite nice. I'm digging the look of this. So now with the sand, I'm gonna add this to our landscape over here. Let's see what that looks like. Actually, I think a light one would be better. And let's also add this to the two landscapes in the background over there. Cool, yeah, that looks pretty cool so far. Let's now take some of these rocks. Let's make them way smaller. So we go like 0.3. And let's move these around until so we can create a composition that we're happy with. So 
something like that. That looks quite nice. So all of this is just, you know, you have creative control. You can move the stuff around however you like, but this is how I liked it. Let's make this like 0.2, a little bit bigger. Let's take this one, put it further back here. And then just rotate it so we get some variation over here. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice so far. Let's add now some, let's add a plane over here. We're gonna rotate that 90 degrees. Put this further back in between the, the background and our other landscapes over there. And then we're gonna create a new shader, so Octane Material. Let's add that over there. Go into the specular and then let's go over here with a gradient and let's throw that in the transmission let's fix this and just bring that down a bit cool so i'm doing this to kind of fake haze in a way just because now we can add some like different colors to it so i think i'm gonna use this orange might be a little bit too harsh, but there's only one way to find out. Let's go over here and change this to orange. That is pretty cool, but yeah, no, it's a little harsh. Maybe something like that, maybe a little bit more on the orangey side. Yeah, I dig that. Cool. Now let's go over here, add a octane area light. Move this to the back, rotate it around, and let's turn off the opacity all the way. Let's move it over there, and I'm gonna change it in the details tab to a sphere, because I want it to kind of be our sun over here. And see, this is the nice thing about having the water like that. Actually, let's make the water a little bit more, maybe like 70. Cool. And then in the light, if we bring this way down, we now get this kind of fade to the light, which is really nice. Okay. Another thing that I added for some detail is I took this plane, moved it even further back, made it a lot bigger. Let's go over here, create shader, octane material, add it onto our plane over there. And then what I did was I got a star texture. Where would I? Ah, there we go. And let's throw that into the opacity over here and into the emission channel. So let's use a texture emission and then texture. So that now we just get the little stars shining through. Let's see how that looks. Let's turn on surface brightness. And then now we have a whole bunch of kind of like stars in the night sky. Obviously you don't have to do this. I just thought it looked pretty cool, just added some more to it. Cool, let's go into the camera now. Let's go into our camera imager and let's find a cool looking LUT. I think I used this LUT when I was creating it. Let's go into the post processing and add a lot of bloom. Something like that should be good. And then let's raise the cutoffs so that we're only getting it in the sun over here. And that looks quite nice. Let's go over here into the camera imager, imager and then drop down this hot pixels to get rid of those. Yeah, that was quite nice. I think actually I could add some more roughness to this. So let me clear that and then just add some roughness. Because it's really only in the background that you're seeing these things, so it's not really too important. Yeah, and I think, oh, one more thing to add. Let's add another octane scatter and let's add in our flower. So now we have actual flowers that are going to be blooming around the place. But we don't need as many. Maybe like that should be maybe like a hundred. Let's go at 500. And now we have some flowers all over the place. Let's just change the seed up so we get something that we like. So 
something like that looks quite nice. Let me just bring down the size of this a little bit so it looks more subtle. And yeah, that looks quite nice. Let's just do a little bit of color grading over here just to get something that looks quite nice. Let's make this a little bit darker. Let's see if we have to move the sun around a bit, see if we can find a better angle. Oh, that looks quite nice. And if I had to make this landscape blue now, I actually quite like that because now we have the difference in colors over here. That looks really nice. I, I dig that a lot. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Let's just see if there's anything else we can do. We can bump up the saturation a tad, add a little bit of a vignette just to focus in. And I think we have a pretty cool render. So in the beginning, you'll see that I added, uh, I showed two different stills of like landscapes that I created. For the second one, I did the exact same thing. All I did was just change the colors of these. And then that's how I was able to get that nice, that darker looking environment. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.